Why in the world is the Vatican seemingly in the business of trying to find E.T.? Yeah, it sounds like a stretch, doesn't it, T.J.? <laughs> yeah. Well, the Vatican got interested in astronomy because they had to keep the calendar, and you need astronomers to do that. And actually, for the last hundred years, there have been Jesuit priests doing research astronomy. So they have a tradition of being interested in astronomy. And maybe the idea of whether there's life out there, especially intelligent life, has an effect on the world's religion. So maybe they want to know the answer. So do, it, do you get a sense uh, from being out there, and you were at, the, at this summit, and scientists and astronomers, and you all gathered out there, but uh, did you get a sense that maybe the Vatican wants to know before anybody else? Well, I think science is such an open process these days that they're not going to have any privileged access to that <laughs> information. I think maybe they're trying to prepare themselves because... You know, the discovery of uh, alien life, as, again, especially intelligent life, would really be pretty profound because it would affect our relationship to the rest of the universe. Does it seem, though, and, and again, uh, you all are scientists out there. Uh, I mean, sure, sure, some of the scientists are, are religious folks, but for the most part, you all are out there working as scientists at the Vatican. But still, uh, does it come up in your discussions at this conference as well how possibly uh, some of the findings, if you did find uh, evidence of life out there, that could directly contradict what we know and what we think about religion. I think there's a distinction between whether we find microbial life, like germs. You yeah. know, I was thinking about your last segment. Wouldn't it be scary if we had to deal with alien germs? So yeah. that might not threaten the world's religions. But intelligent life, yeah. uh, most of the world's major religions have a special relationship between humans and the Creator. And if there are a bunch of other intelligent aliens out there, what does that say about that relationship? What does that say? And some uh, say it would, it would change the game, essentially, uh, in this country. I'm going to put up uh, something here for our, our viewers to see. I'm going to share it with you. It comes from Gary Bates, who's the head of a, an Atlanta-based Creation Ministries International. Uh, his quote saying here, My theological perspective is that E.T. life, extraterrestrial life, terrestrial life, would actually make a mockery of the very reason Christ came to die for our sins for our redemption. Now, do you believe, uh, you kind of hit on it there, but some validity to that statement that uh, um, if you find intelligent life out there, do we uh, almost have to start all over? It makes you wonder whether we've just told ourselves a just-so story. Um, some of the major world's religions, like Buddhism, I don't think would be affected at all because they don't have such a very special story they tell about humans and their redemption. Uh, and tell us this. Uh, out of that meeting, what more do we know? How close are we to maybe finding, and you talked about microbial life and, and organisms, but intelligent life, how close are we getting to possibly making that discovery? Well, it's sort of going in two phases. We're, we're looking for planets around other stars, and after finding none for decades, we now have over 400. And the smallest of those planets is only two times the mass of the Earth. So it's like a cousin of the Earth. So that's going to be a good place to try and look for the, the traces of life, its effect in the atmosphere. And then for looking for intelligent life, we listen for radio signals, sort of intelligent broadcasts, if you like, from aliens. And that activity hasn't succeeded, but of course it might at any time. You said it has not succeeded, but we could, we could pick up something on the radio any, any second now. Well, our technology is improving so fast that the sum of all the previous listening and, and experiments is not that impressive. But with all the modern technology, our ability to listen in space is getting way better every year. And so people are more optimistic that the experiment is going to get interesting. All right. And just curious, the Pope didn't pop into your meeting over there in the Vatican, did he? No, but we were <laughs> greeted and welcomed by Cardinal Lahalo, who's right. the, the, basically the head of the Vatican city-state. So that was a pretty high-level greeting.